Hey YouTube, um, this is Christina Consolo. Um, most of you guys know me as Rad Chick, and I wanted to uh, give everyone an update. Um, as most of you who follow my work know, I have not really been uh, very active or able to do anything, certainly uh, not radio uh, interviews or um, anything like that for a couple of years now. Um, and I got really sick um, in 2012, and in 2013 it kind of started changing into something else, and I had had a couple of head injuries, <clears throat> and um, I was having problems with my vision, and it, uh, it, the symptoms have changed over time. And it's gotten to a point now where I can't even remember what happened in the last 24 hours. Uh, I remember most of the Fukushima stuff, the stuff that's farther back, but things that are more recent, like anything that's happened really this year, I don't have a, a lot of memory of unless I've recorded it or taken pictures of it or written it down in one of the journals where I keep track of my symptoms. So um, I, I wanted to make a video, number one, to thank all of the people that donated to me so I could see the birth of my first grandchild. Um, that was in January, and um, it's a, a memory that I hold very dear to my heart because I do not know when I'm going to be able to see her again. Uh, about a month ago, I finally found a doctor who did the right tests on me and determined what was wrong. And it was absolutely, like, shocking to find out what was wrong. Uh, I, had, I had gone to Mayo and I had seen several different neurologists and neurosurgeons because my symptoms um, went from visual disturbances and like memory glitches and things like that to having this really big event in December of 2015 where I woke up one night and I thought I was dead. And a couple of days before that I had had a bunch of uh, shots in my neck because I was having a lot of pain. And, um, and so I got bounced from doctor to doctor to doctor and as a kind of a last ditch effort I went to see a chiropractor that came highly recommended, and um, he, he spent a lot of time with me, talking to me, and then looked at the MRIs and CAT scans and x-rays and stuff like that that I had done of my brain and of my neck and back and so forth um, over the past couple years, and right away he said, you have a whiplash injury to your neck, and your... Um, your C1 is sitting crooked. Instead of sitting like this, it's sitting like this. And so um, so this was new information based on MRIs that all of these other doctors had seen. And I have these really wacky looking blood vessels in my neck. And um, I, some people thought they were a birth defect. Other doctors thought that I had vertebral basilary insufficiency, which normally only affects 90-year-olds. So they put me, you know, in a neck brace and, and uh, did all of these, like, EEGs, you know, where I actually had to go and stay someplace for six days with stuff glued to my head um, to, uh, to make sure, you know, it wasn't seizures. And they said there was abnormal brain activity, but it wasn't seizure activity, and so everybody was just kind of at a loss of what was wrong, and um, I was doing my sick celebrity search, you know, that I do every night for the Fukushima stuff, and I come across this article about this woman in the UK who's trying to come to the US for surgery because she doesn't have really any specialists in the UK that can fix her. And the headline of the article is, I'm being decapitated by my own skull, mother of two, is just given an, a month to live. And it goes on to detail the, the story of what, what's wrong with her. She suffers from a genetic condition where her ligaments um, get lax. And I have the same thing now, 
although I never had it before until these symptoms got really severe. And so this video pops up. While I'm reading this article, just because I, I was so, like, interested in, in what was going on with her, and I see this woman talking, and she's talking about her symptoms, and I'm like, oh my god, this is the same thing I have. And it was, it was really upsetting. Um, it was really upsetting to, to see this. And so uh, she had seen a specialist in Barcelona named Dr. Gillette, and he actually does email consults for people all over the world where you can write to him and tell him, you know, your story uh, and, and send a couple pictures of, like, MRIs and stuff that you, you've had done. And he'll tell you um, whether or not, uh, you know, what he thinks your problem is and then refer you to a specialist. So he referred me to a specialist in Clearwater, and he said definitely he thought that I had this problem called CCI or cranial cervical instability going on in my neck. So I end up having this test done and I'm going to put a link below to the actual um, uh, inventor of this technology um, giving a lecture about it and I had seen this video on YouTube because my mom told me and she's her boyfriend is a chiropractor, but he's uh, um, been retired for 30 years now, and he's been saying all along, this is brain stem, this is brain stem, this is brain stem. It has to be. Like, this is the only thing that could explain all of these, like, wild and crazy symptoms that you're having. And so, um, so I, so he, this Dr. Gillette in Barcelona referred me to a specialist in Clearwater who basically only sees, like, car accident victims and does... Um, like expert witness testimony, and he does surgery. And he's a pioneer of a very like minimally invasive technique for fixing people who have um, severe injuries to their neck and head. And so I knew the minute I started doing this test, they put me in front of the machine, and he lined me up and looked at me. He was like, "Have you ever been in a car accident?" And I said, well, not, you know, recently in the past I have, but, you know, I have a, a lot of head injuries and, you know, I've fallen a bunch of times and hit my head. And it turns out that my neck is broken, not in just in one place, but in two places. Uh, C1 has an avulsion fracture. In fact, in some of these, um, in some of these images, you can actually see the bone is like floating around in here. And C3 has a compression fracture and I've had these injuries so long um, the first bad fall I had was April 11th of 2011 and it's funny because doctors have asked me how do you remember that date and I said well because it was exactly a month after the Fukushima accident happened so I've been walking around with a broken neck for six years and over time um, my neck has abnormally straightened itself. And then I had another head injury where I got hit in the head with a football at a pool that was thrown from pretty far, and I got hit really hard. Like, it, it kind of, like, um, I was really disoriented after. My, my daughters had to help me um, get back home. And, um, and then I had another fall where I hit my head on a desk, and I went to urgent care, and, and urgent care didn't even do any imaging. And I told them, like, my ear is hurting really bad. And they looked at my ear, and they said, oh, your ear looks fine. Well, that's probably when the second neck break happened, or it could have been the football. But basically, um, my ligaments and my neck, um, not only do I have a broken neck, a multi in multiple places, but over time, my neck has abnormally straightened so much and because these ligaments that hold my spinal column to my skull are torn um my skull is like barely hanging on to my spinal column and when i um move and i can't really move my head in any direction except looking straight ahead or i get these wild symptoms like if i look down everything will look like a bowl uh, my, my cell phone screen will look like a bowl. 
the ground looks wavy, um, mini blinds will look wavy, anything that's a straight line uh, looks like a wave. Um, I have synesthesia now too, where I actually see sound. Uh, like when my cat purrs, I can see my the purrs coming off the cat. Uh, and, you know, some of these symptoms are, like, also, like, schizophrenia. So, you know, the first thing Mayo did when I went to them and I told them, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm seeing, you know, all these weird hallucinations and stuff like that, is they sent me to a shrink and had me put, putting, you know, blocks together all day and stuff like that and found out, you know, there's nothing, you know, wrong with her except she's depressed, which, I mean... Who wouldn't be in this situation? But um, my your C1 and is not supposed to like slide off your C2, and mine is actually sliding like seven millimeters to one side, and uh, I think it was like 3.6 to the other side. So it's pinching my spinal cord. So I have a kind of a couple of things going on. Um, I have what's called um, cerebellum or cerebellar uh, tonsillary ectopia. And people who are born with this, uh, they call it a Chiari malformation, and it's where your um, your cere cerebellum, which controls your heart and your memory. Okay, this is how like a normal brain looks. Your visual cortex is back here. Uh, in mine, this part, like, because when I walk, like, I can feel that my head is wobbling, and you can even see it in that video, it's wobbling, you know, when, when they're doing the test, but my um, spinal column is actually poking into my brain, and it's done it so much that now my brain is herniating down my spinal column, and Chiari patients... People who are born with this, um, this syndrome is caused because this hole it, where their, uh, the bottom opening of their skull, where the spinal cord goes up into the brain um, and, and the brain stem, um, you're supposed to have space here, and I don't have any space. And so not only is the cerebellum like m sliding down into this area, but it's blocking the outflow of the cerebral spinal fluid. Uh, so I get this, like, tremendous, so I get this, like, tremendous, um, pressure that builds up in my head, and it's so bad that, um, and that is sometimes I have trouble talking. Oh, that I, I that at times like my ears will crack and my sinuses will crack. Well, this is where the fluid is made in these ventricle spaces, and then this is the fluid that surrounds your brain and provides it with like nutrients. And then it's supposed to like go down your spinal column here. Well, mine is getting like plugged up right here, and this is like the drain. It's like if you have a, a, a washcloth and you're... It's like if you have a, like a washcloth in the bottom of your um, bathtub, you know, the water won't drain out, right? So that's kind of what's happening with me, and, and I'll actually, like, at times feel the roof of my mouth, like, tearing, like, I can hear it and feel it, because I have so much intracranial pressure build up. So, the good news is, um, that they can fix this, but had I not seen this, this specialist, um, that I was referred to in Florida, and he's, he's like a world-renowned guy, um, in fact, it, this is one of the talks that he gave where he's actually doing this surgery, and um, it, it's pretty graphic, a uh, surgery, and, and you know, but I, I have to have it. Like, I'm going to get keep getting worse if I don't. Like, here's the spinal...
column that's open, and, and he's going to grab this with forceps, and he's going to show, like, this is someone who has a loose spinal column, okay? Your neck is not supposed to move like that. Um, but it does if you have, like, ligament tears or breaks in your neck. And so, like, you know, shit, stuff shifts. I almost said shit shifts around. Stuff shifts around in your brain um, because of this. And, and um, in addition to uh, going in and putting screws in to, um, to hold these broken bones together, they're also going to do a brain decompression um, at the same time. And I have another picture of that somewhere. I have a zillion links open right now because I'm watching a hurricane. I'm <laughs> um, here's a picture of, of someone with Chiari um, malformation. Maybe you can get a bigger one here. Okay, like here's your, this is your cerebellum, right? And here's your visual cortex back here. And your cerebellum is supposed to line up um, with this area. It's never supposed to go below that. This is the tonsillary ectopia. I don't have my um, my MRI scan handy, or I could show you mine. But um, so when it, when this happens, it blocks the outflow of the CSF, the, the cerebral spinal fluid. You get extremely high um, intracranial pressures, which can actually put pressure on the optic nerve and cause lots of wild symptoms and even swelling of the optic nerve, which is a, a danger and can cause permanent blindness, which is another reason why I need to have this done. And at the time of surgery, after they go in, um, they're going to take one of the discs out uh, and replace it with an implant and then put like mesh caging over uh, some of my vertebrae to hold them together, and they'll also take out uh, a piece of the skull somewhere around here so that the cerebellum has a place to fall into instead of going down into here. And so the pressure on the brainstem is really what's caused all these wild symptoms. And, you know, when I, I'm, I'm now like a member in some of these Chiari groups, on Facebook, although what what you know what they have is congenital, what I have is traumatic, but it's just in, in essence almost the same thing. Um, and, and they have like we have all the same stuff. Like they have drop attacks, or you know sometimes it runs in families, and there's actually little kids, you know, um, that that have this. And a, a lady had posted yesterday that um, she was a two year old that has it, and. He's been having these really crazy outbursts of anger, and, and he's screaming like he's in pain, and because he can't talk, they don't know what's wrong with him. And that's it, incredibly sad, and I think he's probably too young to have that kind of surgery yet, but um, th this is what my issue has been. And it's really, what disturbs me the most is that the chiropractor that saw me just for a consult, and I and I told him, you know, I didn't want him to touch me. I was scared of anybody touching me because of how, like, how sensitive things are, and I knew the problem had to exist between here and here. I mean, it just had to, because that's where all of my symptoms stem from. Um, the muscle spasms, which would then, like, travel down my spine, and when there was a blockage of this cerebral spinal fluid, I just would have these uh, it, this horrendous muscle spasms. You could see them through my skin. They were like snakes moving under my skin. I mean, they were crazy, and I, and I have video of that, but I, I don't have any clothes on in the video because when this happens, like, I get so hot, I can't stand having clothes on. Um, or, or I would show you, like, what that looks like. It, it was... Um, it's just been, it's just been unbelievable. And, and you know, my, my mom's boyfriend, who's 93, like, has said from the very beginning of this, it has to be brainstem. And how Mayo missed this is just beyond me. Like, I saw, like, their top neurology vascular specialist 
and their top um, neurovascular surgeon and one of their top neurologists. And I was having all of these symptoms, and the craziest thing about this was that we told every doctor that I saw when I have one of these attacks, and I have at least one a day. I had one last night where I stopped breathing. I passed out a bunch of times. Um, uh, my, my family, uh, what they have to do is actually, like, lift the back of my head, and I'll come to again, just like that. I go from, like, slurring and being, like, in an underwater state. Like, that's what I feel like I'm underwater. Like, that's how I move how I, you know, I talk funny, um, that lifting the skull helped alleviate this, that that wasn't a clue to any of these doctors that I saw. And I mean, I've gone through just two and a half years of absolute hell. Um, and so I'm, I'm scheduled for surgery in September. Uh, I, there's quite a bit of money that I have to raise to pay for the surgery, I have a, the surgery center covered, and um, and I'm uh, the surgeon's fee is what I still need to be to get covered. But I have some things in the works uh, that I hope is going to come through um, medical loans and things like that for this because without the surgery, I, I will get worse, and I'm getting worse almost week to week. Uh, and, and, you know, the, the symptoms are just so wild. But the, the other thing, the other reason that I wanted to share this is because I did post about this on my Facebook page uh, a couple weeks ago. And I've had a lot of people that have contacted me since I put out a video um, about a year ago. And they were thinking at that time that I was having TIAs that have horrible neck issues. And a lot of these people have been in car accidents. And um, and even a low-impact car accident can cause just horrendous damage in your neck. And I'm going to drop a video. Um, it's an introductory video on DMX narrated by John Hasselway. This was the guy who is actually the inventor of DMX, and he was the guy who actually did my uh, DMX study. And had I not had this test, they wouldn't have seen the neck breaks because they do the x-rays, and it's a very low level of radiation, but they do actually about 2,700 images, uh, as opposed to doing, you know, six you know, having your head turned in different ways. They, so they can see, and his, his question is basically, when does it hurt? And I said, when I move my neck pretty much in any direction. Um, so this isn't, this isn't mine. The other one was mine. This is a, a, another person's. But he has a video in here of a guy who was in a, a low-impact motor vehicle accident, and he had already had, like, a bunch of um, mesh caging and stuff in his neck and wires and and all, and uh, his neurosurgeon said that he was fine, and then he had this DMX done, and what they showed was, like, the wires and everything were completely broken, and this was from, like, a 30-mile-per-hour accident. Mayo doesn't even have this technology. There's very few places, I think there's only 400 places in the U.S. that have uh, a DMX, and they do them for shoulders and knees and, you know, uh, pelvic problems and lower back issues and, you know, neck problems, and they're really uh, very uh, helpful in, in diagnosing, and without this, they would have never figured out what's wrong. And the other thing that I had, I'll just talk while the video's loading, um, was I had an upright or phonar uh, MRI done. And normally when they do MRIs, you know, you're laying down, and if you have this Chiari malformation or you have a tonsillary ectopia or a brainstem issue where that medullary space is being crowded, uh, it won't show up when you're laying down because the cerebellum falls back into the back of your head. So it looks like you're normal. The only way that it shows is when you have it upright and you you put your head in different positions. They actually have a bar that you rest your head against 
while they're doing the MRI. And um, that is what showed the tonsillary ectopia. And I guess this is not going to load for me. I don't know what the deal is. Maybe I've got too many tabs open here. Um, but oh, I really wanted you guys to see this car accident guy. But anyway, um, I had beg been just begging my neurologist to do an upright MRI for for like a year, and he said that it wasn't possible. They didn't have any of those machines around Orlando. Well, they had one in Tampa, because that's where I had mine done. He had, had, had to drive three hours to have it done. Um, but, uh, you know, I would have just gradually gotten worse, and this probably would have killed me. I, or, you know, I could have gone blind, and I'm at a point now that when I have attacks, if I turn my head, you know, I, I mean, I most of the time I'm wearing a neck brace, not all the time, because it, I, my, my neck is so irritated, like the skin and everything from wearing neck braces so much, that I have a bunch of different ones I switch out, and, and sometimes if I know I'm going to be sitting for a while, I just won't have anything on it. Um, but because this... Uh, my C1 is actually, like, rotated and shifted so much um, over over six years, uh, or possibly two years, we're really not sure which, which uh, break occurred when, um, that I have a tremendous amount of, like, inflammation in my neck and in my in my face sometimes I'll actually have like pockets like sticking out like bubbles on my forehead um, and, and I have the swelling and it actually goes all the way down into my chest that when I look down now and you wouldn't believe how many times a day you actually look down like brushing your teeth you know trying to to cut an apple you know you look down constantly when I look down or I look up my spinal cord is actually being pinched off and I think I said already, I, I don't have my MRI images handy, or I'd show those to you, too. But um, the surgery can fix all of this. So I'm really fortunate that um, that was, wasn't something worse. You know, uh, I had been diagnosed with so many things, autonomic neuropathy, which I might still have because this brain stem has been... Uh, crowded and, and it had so much pressure exerted on it over such a long period of time and I mean I've had literally thousands of these attacks over the past two and a half years which was another indication that they couldn't be TIAs or I would have had brain damage by this point um, it's actually my brain is going into shock from it being poked by the straightness of my neck which was my neck trying to straighten itself and tearing of the ligaments just all the way, you know, down uh, my neck. So it's, um, <sighs> it's a shitty situation. Um, and the surgery is going to be a, a pretty, you know, uh, a poorly understood prognosis, I guess you would say, because the injury occurred from something traumatic uh, and, and not what they usually see where this happens. So, uh, you know, I'm going to try to keep everybody posted right now. My surgery is scheduled for, I think it's September 28th. And I'm going to try to keep people updated on, uh, you know, going into it and, and, and after it's done, uh, the, the recovery um, can be a little bit touchy sometimes. They occasionally will have to go in and put in a shunt or something of that nature or if there's any kind of, like, uh, leak from the surgery, like a, a CSF leak. Um... But, you know, most of the patients that have, like, a good surgical outcome, all of their symptoms of this completely go away. And I hope that's what happens to me. Uh, 
there's a couple indications that I may not have a full recovery from this because one of the things is all the visual disturbances that I have are uh, uh, quite a bit more sophisticated than what any of these doctors have seen. And I've seen two retina specialists, including one that I worked for for 14 years when I was back up in Michigan, and a neuro-ophthalmologist down here, and um, they were just kind of at a loss of, like, why I was having such severe um, hallucinations and things like that, because I'll actually, like, hallucinate things that aren't are even there, like uh, animals, people, um, items that I'll reach for that aren't there. Sometimes it's because my vision is, is double, too, and... I get very confused easily because uh, the, my vision goes out of whack and then uh, I, I don't realize right away that things are getting screwy. It's usually an indicator that something's coming, like an attack is coming as soon as I start seeing weird things. And the neuro-ophthalmologist said when your your brain like blanks out or your, your eyes have a, a blind spot, um, your brain wants to see something, so it will drop in a picture of something that you've seen earlier in the day. And that's actually happened to me multiple times. So, um, you know, the synesthesia, synesthesia, and I'm not even sure I'm saying that right, that's the one thing that I kind of hope doesn't go away because it's kind of cool to see, like, you know, to be able to see sound in certain instances. Like, I can see rainfall looks almost like, a matrix in my head, and um, I actually see pain as a color. I see it as yellow when it lights up in different areas of my body, like I see it in my mind's eye. And I've written to like the world's like foremost authority on this, uh, Dr. Jamie Ward from uh, University of Essex, and I'm anxious to hear what he has to say about it, although all of his studies have been synesthesia and it's linked to autism. Um, one thing that they do notice in people that have this is that they have, like, exponential, um, memory retention. And I've often wondered, um, how sometimes I could, um, I, I could learn and almost recite, you know, verbatim all the nuclear accidents that I've studied and things like that. And <laughs> maybe it could have been from this brain thing that was going on, I don't know, but I felt like my IQ had gone up considerably, and, and now it seems like it's going down. Um, I definitely am having issues with uh, cognitive function and, and memory. Um, I can't remember any movie or TV show that I have ever seen. Uh, I know that I watched Mad Men, Mad Men last night for the for the first time, and but I couldn't, I can't really tell you a thing that happened in it, and and so I watch things like over and over again. I'll remember if they're good or interesting or if they were bad, but I can't remember anything about the story, and I guess that's like classic cerebellum issues. So anyway, hopefully all of that is going to be fixed soon. Um, that I will keep you guys updated as much as I can, and I want to thank everybody again so much for helping me to see my first grandchild being born. And um, that has been the absolute like highlight of the last year of my life. And uh, I have to get better for her and my family. And uh, I hope to get back to being able to write and, uh, and, and do more things in, in the future after I get fixed. So thank you, everyone, and please check out that DMX video. Um, I'll post the link below because um, if you have issues that uh, doctors have trouble pinpointing, uh, you may want to try to find a place that can do a DMX study on you because it will show things that just there's no x-ray or MRI or CT would even show this kind of information. Um, the DMX is really one of the most incredible pieces of technology I've ever seen, and I was just so impressed with it, uh, and I think it would be helpful for a lot of people to know that it is available. You just have to look for it. So, um, 
take care everyone and I will talk to everybody soon.